Everybody stayed for the, you know, after credits, and it did not disappoint. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, seeing Bib Fortuna chilling on on Jabba Hut, Jabba the Hut's fucking throne, and he was all, you know, super overweight and acting, speaking, you know, Hut, and I loved it. It was cool. Well, a lot of spec books. Uh, there's a, a lot of excitement about the Underworld miniseries. A lot of excitement about uh, Boba Fett's daughter, even though you know the age issue. I think uh, is a head scratcher for uh, a lot of people who pay much more attention to uh, continuity than I do. Uh, not because it's not necessarily important, just because I think they have the freedom to kind of do whatever they want if it makes sense. Um, a lot of people excited about that Jedi Academy book uh, for Luke and going back and, you know, you're seeing a spike in, in some of the original Star Wars books now uh, from the Marvel run. That, I mean, you know, after the uh, last 9-8 sale, I think it was $3,000. Um, Z was real close to picking up the 35 cent price variant. I think uh, kicking himself in the ass for not doing the that. Luke Boba Fett is... A big deal because if you're an old school Star Wars fan, you know the story of 1313 and how Lucas really wanted to make that. And, you know, this was like 2005 or six, I think, when that got announced. And all of us Star Wars fans were super stoked that we were going to get a major uh, channel. You know, I think it was supposed to be on like one of the major three channels at the time. And we were going to get a, a, a bounty hunter show based on, you know, this level of Coruscant where all the dastardly people hang out. And if you don't think we're going there, you're crazy. This is another thing that Lucas always wanted to do badly and is finally getting able to do, being able to do.